The U.S. Navy has deployed its sailors to go to war, but not this U.S. Navy. We're talking United States Navy Recruiting Command. Now, before everyone gets mad at me in the comments and you start saying I clickbait all of you, I'm not the one who's saying this. It's the U.S. Navy's Recruitment Command who's saying this, and a lot of people in the Navy are really annoyed right now. So here's what's going on. The U.S. Navy is essentially forcing its recruiters to work six days a week, and they are comparing this heavy workload almost to a emergency deployment. So in this video, please stick with me because we're going to dig into all of this and how this might completely backfire and how this might force recruiters to want to get out of the Navy. But the Navy has a backup plan if you want to try leaving the Navy. So again, stick with me. Okay, so here's what you need to know. There was a leaked document that was given to the Navy Times. And honestly, what that probably means is there's some sort of sailor out there who just gave the document over to the Navy Times. And the Navy Times is just putting everyone on blast. But according to the document, there are 3,900 recruiters who are going to be put on a six-day work week. Now, before a lot of you say, well, what's wrong with working six days a week? Um, I work seven days a week or I'm gone for a month at a time. Well, the issue is this. You don't get paid overtime for working six days a week as a recruiter. Now, I'm not saying being a recruiter is supposed to be a chill gig, but there's only so much a recruiter can do in trying to force people to join the Navy. But nonetheless, you have 3,900 recruiters, sailors, who are now being put on these emergency orders to hopefully work overtime, no pun intended, and get people to join the Navy. Now, the memo or leaked document, aka the orders, came from Rear Admiral Alexis Walker. Now, Alexis Walker used the phrasing, this is a war fighting imperative, which essentially he's trying to put it on the level of this is a very serious thing. That's why we are forcing you to work six days a week. Now, according to the email, Walker's email warns that the service experts to miss its recruiting goal for this physical year by 6,500 to 7,000 sailors. Again, um, this year, the U.S. Navy is going to miss its recruiting recruitment goal by 6,500 sailors to 7,000 sailors. Now, when you compare that to the U.S. Army, which is 15,000 soldiers, I would say the U.S. Navy's not doing that bad. The U.S. Army missing 15,000 soldiers, that's nearly an entire division of soldiers, but I digress. Okay, so here's how you know the U.S. Navy recruiters are really annoyed at this. Right here in the highlighted portion, it says, we're getting hit with a crap ton of bad news. And that's coming from one of the recipients of the email. And this recipient is from a petty officer first class. Now, I'm just going to say this. It's never a good thing when any sort of military member is willing to leak information over to a publication to hopefully get the news out that everyone, we can't control this situation and, and we're being forced to work massive amounts of overtime for no extra pay. What are we supposed to do here? But then again, the rest of this email also states this. I am not being dramatic when I say that our inability to bring in the right numbers and types of people impacts our ability to fight and win. Walker wrote in the email, which officials verified, recruiting is the prime mover, the thing that makes everything else go for the entire Navy. And I completely agree with that. That's 100% true. But again, what are these recruiters supposed to do on a six... Um, day week work schedule especially at the time of making this video it's the summer so what are they going to do all the kids are gone for the summer and so this is why it's even more difficult for sailors or any, really any sort of recruiters to get any recruits into the navy now look i 100 percent understand that you need recruits to join your branch of service but again i stand behind the recruiter saying what are we supposed to do you guys are in charge of the policies and if the benefits don't look good why would somebody join the navy but again, here in this email or memo, it says, if we are unsuccessful in our mission, it negatively impacts fleet manning with potential ramifications for promotion and retention and strength and how we fight. So again, he is comparing this to two sides of the coin. Like right now, the recruiters, you guys are deployed and it's almost like a, a war type situation. We need to get more people in here because when we actually have to fight a real war, we don't have sailors to fight the war. Now, here's my favorite part of this entire story are the rumors coming out of the U.S. Navy uh, Recruitment Command. Here's what the issue is. If anybody is super unmotivated, this is how you make sailors even more unmotivated. It says so right here. While rumors have spread among Navy recruiters this week that a new policy will force them to serve an additional year as a recruiter and that sailors coming to recruiting will have to leave their old command six months early, officials with the Office of the Chief of Naval Personnel said Thursday that such a policy has not been en enacted, although it is within the Navy's purview. So there's a good and a bad. If you are a recruiter right now in the U.S. Navy and you're hoping just to ride out your contract and get out, you might have to work an extra year. 
However, if you are a sailor and you can't stand your command, you can get out six months early and go join as a recruiter, but then potentially work an extra year. So you see where sometimes where there's bad, there's good. But mostly bad. And if any of you guys are expecting good news, I feel really bad for these recruiters because I actually had the uh, privilege of working with the U.S. Army uh, Recruitment Command up in Indiana. It was quite an honor. I got to do public speaking on their behalf. And I really did get to see how working as a recruiter is very difficult because you can only persuade someone, someone so much to join the military. It really takes that recruit their own motivation to join. Now, in the U.S. Army, they made things even more simple where even if you don't qualify to join, we'll still take you and we'll train you up to get qualified then you go through basic training and the u.s army essentially calls that a preparatory course now maybe the u.s navy could um, implement that but nonetheless um, in the email it says look navy recruiters you might be working six days a week up until uh the physical year in september so pretty much through the whole summer and the reason why um, this is what i learned from the u.s army recruitment um when you work as a recruiter during the summer it's one of the most difficult times because again the kids are out of school the kids sort of already figured out what they're going to do they're going to try riding out the summer work a summer job um, and then for 11th graders going into 12th grade, a lot of those kids are like, okay, let's figure out what we're going to do. Maybe I'll join the military. So I'm assuming why they're working until September is because getting back into the school year, that's when recruiters can go to the school because schools have to allow recruiters to go into the school. So again, uh, recruiters are probably going to be working six days a week until September, but who knows? It might keep going if nothing gets fixed or the numbers don't get better. Now, in my short time of being... Now, in my short time of being embedded with recruiters, again, what it really does come down to is you can tell somebody I'm going to give you a million dollars, but you just have to work three years of your life to get it. Now, I'm not saying the U.S. military is giving out $3 million, but the U.S. military has a really good benefits package during and after with the VA benefits, going to school, VA home loans, etc. But again, a lot of these younger recruits, they don't necessarily, it's not that they don't trust that, but there's other options out there. Um, I seen a report the other day that the U.S. Army <clears throat> feels like they're fighting with fast food chains because now fast food chains are paying kids college or they're giving really good benefits. So I do see this being a really big issue. I don't know what the Navy is going to do or not do to get more recruits to join the Navy. But again, I do feel like that the recruiters are being targeted. If you put 10,000 recruiters um, in one area, yes, um, you're working the numbers game. And hopefully out of those 10,000 recruiters, you'll get like two recruits. Because again, what a lot of people don't realize is that the recruiters are fighting amongst the branches. Um, if we're in a small population, the Army is fighting against the Marines, Marines against Navy, Navy against Space Force and Air Force, and they're all fighting to get one or two kids out of a school to join their branch. So that's the part that recruitment doesn't really talk about is that, yes, we're out here trying to recruit um, new candidates, but they're also really competing and fighting against the other branches. And I saw that firsthand. It was quite incredible. And honestly, it's kind of sad. So anyway, I digress. That is the video. Let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. Uh, is this a good idea? Should we be putting six day work week? Should we should we make uh, the life of a, of a recruiter even more stressful? Let me know what you guys think. Again, comments, opinions down below. We'll see you later.